Well, um, here I am in my home, and before I take the drug, uh, Dr. Osmond's got uh, one or two quite unrehearsed questions, I've no idea what they are, to put to me. Right, Christopher, carry on. Could you tell me the date today, please? The date? Yes. Uh, it was Friday, the um, 2nd of December. In right? 1955, I want Christopher you to repeat Mayhew, this sentence MP and TV now, presenter, listen, yeah. took mescaline to be under rich the supervision and of Humphrey Osmond. A nation must the BBC have filmed the experiment. This is the first time of wood. Sure. To be rich and prosperous, a nation must have a safe, secure supply of wood. After initial psychological tests, the experiment began at noon. Well, shall we go right ahead, then? And oh, I'll take it. Yes, there she is. Well, uh, I'm feeling perfectly fit at the moment, and as sane as I ever am, and I'll take the drug now. Today, elevated to the House yes. of Lords, Christopher okay, Mayhew watches that, uh, the film with Humphrey Osmond. What's quite like this been about, well, it's good evening or morning. Perhaps half a dozen times during the experiment, uh, I would uh, be withdrawn from my surroundings and from myself and uh, have an experience, uh, a state of euphoria, for a period of time that didn't end for me. It didn't last for minutes or hours, but for months. I do try and assure you that, from my point of view, between uh, the time that I perhaps begin this sentence and the time that I end it, mm. I shall have gone a long time will elapsed, something. And uh... the psychiatrists afterwards and common sense. They all said, this is nonsense. You couldn't have had these experiences because there was no time, as the film shows, there's no time for you to have them in. And the psychiatrists would speak, and I accept this, that I was simply showing the symptoms of what they call the disintegration of the ego. I accept that too. At the same time, they didn't have the experience. <laughs> and uh, when I look back, even now, after 30 years, when I remember that after the experiment, I remember that afternoon, not as so many minutes spent in my drawing room, interrupted by these strange excursions in time, but as years and years of heavenly bliss, interrupted by short periods in my drawing room. When I recall it, and when I recall various uh, other symptoms, I think the simplest explanation is that I had these experiences, that they were real, and that they took place outside time. I am moving at this moment from one time into another time and back again. And I'm, uh, I'm not so conscious, Humphrey, of moving myself in space. But I'm extremely conscious of moving in time, of things having no succession. and that there be no absolute time, no absolute space. It is simply what we impose on the outside world. I think that uh, the experience was valid. I, I think, uh, for the reasons I've given, that uh, you can dismiss it as a dreamlike hallucination which lasted a fraction of a second, owing to the disintegration of my ego and so on. Or you can say with me, it was a real experience which happened outside time. And that is my view. And that is, and for various sort of associated symptoms, I would say that uh, uh, on that occasion, by a shortcut, I did visit the world known to the mystics and to some mentally sick people. And therefore, to that extent, I'd say it is valid.